Okay. So I think I'm going to kickstart um, and just welcome everybody into the session at the BET 2020 conference, which was going to be in um, London. Um, I'll just put my camera on so everybody can see me. Hi. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, today I'm joined by the lovely Serafina Volder Gabriel from PaySafe or Income Access, as you might know her. So thank you very much for joining me today. And we've got a really interesting um, session to talk about. Um, so I think I'm going to kick started with just saying welcome to everybody that's joined us. We're going to be talking about affiliate marketing today and shortly after this call we will be available to actually answer live Q&A in the chat feature which will be following this video. So okay. I'm going to kick off and um, allow Sarafina to introduce herself. Sure. So, hi, I'm Sarafina. Um, I am the uh, Vice President of Strategy at Income Access. Um, we are uh, part of the PaySafe uh, family and we were acquired in 2016. We typically were, we launched as a digital marketing company that specializes in affiliate marketing. Um, I myself have been there for nearly 16 years, uh, almost 16 years actually this week. So, yeah, it's been a, f a fantastic journey, a brilliant company, and uh, lots, lots of exciting things we've gone through over the years. I think that's the one thing that you can say about affiliate marketing is that it never stays the same, and we'll discuss that a little bit later. But a little oh, bit yeah. about me. Um, my name is Leanne Johnston, and I am the founder of Affiliate Insider, and I also run a private consultancy called uh, leannejohnstone.com, which helps small, medium enterprises understand affiliate marketing and leverage um, sales and tactics that I've developed over the last two decades to grow affiliate marketing programs. I also run my own private training academy, which um, is delivered both live and in person, um, helping affiliate marketers all around the world to understand the strategy that sits behind successful affiliate marketing programs. So that's a little bit about me and a little bit about Serafina, and we're absolutely thrilled to be here with you today to talk about our favorite subject, which is affiliate marketing. Um, so on the agenda today, we're going to be talking about how affiliate marketing is expanding and what's happening with digital in general and how affiliate marketing sits alongside your digital marketing mix. And we'll be answering this big question, which is why are networks becoming full service digital agencies? And I think I'm going to kick off and ask Serafina to just give her view from a technical perspective and a, and a platform perspective as to why she thinks um, affiliate networks are fast becoming full service digital agencies. Sure, Leanne, that's a brilliant question. I mean, um, when you look at your marketing mix, it's important that you have you don't put all your eggs in one basket and you're, you're dabbing with different elements of marketing. So whether you're doing some SEO to get some organic traffic, you've got your social media, you've got your paid advertising and affiliate marketing is also a part of it. And one big thing that a lot of companies struggle to do is to measure. So if you are tracking things or reporting things in various different places, then it becomes very difficult because you're not comparing apples with apples. So a big advantage of the networks is you put everything in one place so you have one stable medium to compare your campaigns and to understand the performance of them so you know where to put your marketing budget. So I think that is one of the biggest advantages of why we're seeing more and more of the networks offering more than one service. I have to say though, from experience, and I'm sure you might agree as well, that, um, you know, I have not come across one agency or individual who's an expert at every aspect of digital marketing. No. You typically will find somebody will be a specialist at one thing and they'll be good enough at other things. So finding that partner that can do it all is great, but they're not going to necessarily be the hundred percent experts at every single aspect of it. No, what do you I, mean, think, I think anybody yeah. that works in digital marketing has kind of sort of come to the realization that in order to be an expert in something, you have to specialize in one thing. Yeah. But even that is impossible to do because as we know, affiliate marketing is changing every day, every week, every month, every year. 
And in order to stay ahead and, and keep abreast of what's happening with these digital trends, you constantly have to continue learning. And one of the things that I always say is that you choose affiliate marketing as a life choice, not a job. Um, yeah. And the reason for that is because you have to continue learning in your job every single day in order to understand how things are changing around you. So affiliate marketing used 100%. to be, I think, um, a satellite function to the mar to the generic marketing function. Um, but I think now more and more people are realizing that affiliate marketing has to sit as part of the digital mix and therefore all your other digital channels need to integrate with it. Um, and, and this sort of answers the question that we're talking about in terms of networks becoming full service digital agencies in that to understand what's really happening and working in your online environment, you need to um, have a, a broader understanding of what's happening with digital as it's coming into your platform or into your website. And networks can offer that um, data in a more detailed platform and in one place, which makes it a lot easier for digital marketers to ascertain what's working, what's not, and then optimize it frequently or even sometimes in real time, which I think your platform does too. Um, you know, data is almost one of the most important things that an affiliate marketer or a digital marketer has at their disposal to improve and maintain and optimize campaigns. And, and that really boils down to making sure that the margins of your budget are spent as accurately as possible. So it, it kind of makes sense that networks are trying to offer all of these services. But on the flip side to that, I think we also need to understand that what services you get from generic digital agencies aren't always going to be high-end specialist services. So depending on what kind of resources you have in your own business and what skills levels you have in your own business, there is still a call to get an expert in to help you with certain channels. Um, Correct. I'm not sure if you experience that on your side as well, Dina. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I have to say the reason why affiliate marketing is so attractive is because affiliates themselves are those experts. Mm. You come across affiliates in all of the different marketing um, channels where, because they, that's what they do. They know how to go out, market, get traffic. Um, so the beauty of affiliate marketing is you tap into one source and you've got these ambassadors who are experts at all the different marketing channels that are out there that can actually help you market your brand even better. And I, I think that's one of the beauties that I've learned about affiliate marketing. And you learn so much more just by having that open dialogue with your affiliates. And like you said, you know, what's affiliate marketing if you haven't experienced change? I mean, when I joined, we, we had people who were just individuals who were doing it as a passion. Mm -hmm. Now you've got affiliates who are publicly traded companies you know exactly so if that isn't changed i don't know what is <laughs> i just want to talk a little bit more about how other services other digital services plug into the affiliate um platform because i know that your platform is a full service um you know marketing function you can run your ad campaigns you can run i think even mobile and apps um traffic through through your network yes what are the other services that networks are typically offering? Is it the paid media or, or do they diversify into lots of other service offerings? Yes. So, I mean, obviously, we there. if you are able to track everything, you can put nearly whatever you want in it. So the social media, your paid search, your um, SEO, organic traffic. Um, they do content marketing and PR. Obviously, okay. affiliate marketing is an, another aspect. Um, social media as well if I said was that, that born out of the fact that clients were asking for it or is it just a natural progression for your business to actually expand that way yeah I think it started first from I want to be able to track this and then it became what well, you know as you progress into other channels and other channels and then the challenge of not being able to have it all in one place mm. um, made it difficult to analyze and assess the performance of the campaigns so as a result, then came, I want to manage them, not just track them, but I want to be able to manage them. And obviously, because we've got the hosting, the ad serving and the hosting features as well, and the post back. So there's so many varieties of ways that we can, we can track and monitor performance. Mm -hmm. Analytics is very, very important. As we all know, as marketers, you don't, if you don't analyze, then you, you're just, you know, marketing blindly and you don't know where you're putting your budget. So 
it's important you understand exactly what's working, what's not working and put more, more towards what's working. You actually said a really important word there, which is performance. Now, a lot of people are confused about the fact that affiliate marketing is part of performance marketing and performance marketing relates to anything that you pay on a performance metric. So it's actually another reason why networks are becoming more full service digital um, platforms because all of those performance marketing attributes need to be um, pulled together into one place in order for you to understand what's really working um, yeah. for your brand. So I know that there's going to be a, a host of different people here from lots of different verticals. So, you know, casino, sports, lottery, finance, trading, blockchain, there's going to be such a lot of different people here on this call. What do you think that that has an impact on, um, you know, using full service um, networks to manage lots of different products. I mean, is that another reason that we could say has led to um, programs, you know, doing this kind of thing and, and offering more services than just the platform? Yes, I think, I think definitely I'm with you there. Um, a network, I mean, such as ourselves, for example, it's, it's really a full service gaming network. So we, we have um, experience with all the different verticals and each time a new one comes up, you know, you educate yourself and you see, because the, the reality is there's a lot of crossover. So I remember when, you know, in the old days, it was mainly casino and poker mm. and then sports betting came to be, and then bingo took off like massively. And then lotteries have been a bit slower to get there, but that's because, you know, the nature of lotteries, there's a big element of it that's still very, land base or yeah. or you know brick and mortar base um but now you're seeing more and more of the lotteries going online the state lotteries are going online so that in itself and the fact that the lotteries are also adapting or adding slot games or sports games is, is making it more attractive for that affiliate who used to be just a casino affiliate is now yeah. able to now diversify and go after and start marketing more of the um operators that or, or merchants that are offering the different um, verticals so as a network you you're in a great position to be able to leverage that pool of um, affiliates or partnerships that you've got okay great so i want to move on to the next slide that we had prepped here which was the facts affiliate marketing impacts your other digital channels which we sort of covered a little bit but maybe let's share to the audience how we think affiliate marketing should be managed as part of the bigger digital marketing mix because i think historically in our industry it has sort of been managed as a totally separate marketing channel and yeah. often the communication between what's happening with you know your seo team your paid media team or any of the you know the social media team even sometimes there's a miscommunication between all four of those teams and you you lose out on leverage so what's your experience in in that scenario and what what insights can you share um, what I would say is you have to remember who are affiliates. Affiliates are your advertising arm. They are part of your team, although they don't belong to your company, mm. and they're advertising your products or services. So you have them as almost your brand ambassadors because they're endorsing you as a business. They're endorsing your product and they're helping to influence a user from saying, well, why should I go and play here versus why should I go and place my bet over here? So one of the things you have to remember with the affiliates is that level of endorsement comes due to your partnership with them. Um, now, you don't control what traffic and some to, uh, such an extent, neither do the affiliates control. The best they can do is understand your product, understand your market, understand your target audience and then be able to match it with the traffic sources that they're going after. Once that happens, the rest is up to you to take that traffic on board, convert it, retain it, and keep it going so you're profitable for both parties. Um, the fact of the matter is you should obviously also have an element of your own organic traffic that's coming because that's something you control. Mm. And if for any reason an affiliate struggles to send you a lot of traffic for whatever reason, then you're not totally dependent because you haven't put all your dependency on one particular channel. So that mix has to be important, but affiliates absolutely are a big part of that mix. Um, 
I mean, one of the what things I that say. I've seen in, in terms of when we manage clients is we really work very closely with the other marketing departments because one thing that, that often is missed is that you can leverage affiliates based on um, the traffic sources that they have. So for example, if you want to reduce your costs in paid media, you can actually use various affiliates to increase their leverage and exposure so that you don't have to be spending so much upfront. Absolutely. And I think that's a really key part of strategy that often gets missed when yeah. planning, when planning with affiliate programs and when planning with other parts of your marketing team, there needs to be more of a coming together between the affiliate teams and the paid media teams. I had a conversation yeah. with a client just the other day where they were looking to go into a new market and they were, it was basically the country management team that had contacted us to, to help them to get leverage in, in a very um, unique market. And the first question I asked them was, well, have you spoken to your affiliate team to see how many affiliates have traffic from that region? And the answer was no. And I was like, how can you not have had that conversation when that would be the first place that I would start is going to go find the people that are already sending us that traffic and figuring out how you can get more of those people involved in your country management strategy in order to move that forward. So I think I just think that it's really important that affiliate marketers don't get siloed out of the digital marketing mix um, because they're treated as an independent channel because really for you to leverage your budgets, your digital acquisition budgets, you need to be considering how your affiliates can work with you to do that because they are agile and they are getting traffic from various sources and you tapping into that as part of your planning and strategic management can really impact the margins that you save on your budgets. So absolutely. That's just one and of the experiences. Yeah. And the other thing I'll add is also affiliates are they're they're passionate about what they do. So uh, most good affiliates will be your customers. Hmm. They'll also give you insight on your product, your CRM, the the whole experience that you are asking them to market. So they will actually test it and they'll see. And if they'll give you they're a very good source of feedback. So um, where you might think that, oh, you've got the best product, maybe you do, but maybe the customer journey isn't as fluid as it could be. Mm. So the affiliates will actually help you with that as well. And they're a great source of, of very valuable, insightful product uh, feedback. The other thing they will do also is they'll, they'll help you with your understanding your player values and you know, your, the lifetime of the customers because how do you know what commissions to offer if you don't even understand what your values are? What, what's your player value? What does it cost to acquire a customer? So if, many times I yeah. have a live training academy or a virtual mastermind and it's the first question I ask affiliate managers and often it's the first question that they can never answer. And I'm like, how can you even go out and do a deal when you don't know what you can afford? Exactly. So, you know, and, and that kind of information they would also pull from the rest of their marketing team because if you've got sophisticated marketing and you're spending big budgets you would be able to have attribution modeling put in place and i believe your system also allows that correct correct all of that integrates together and when you're using all of that as a well-oiled machine your margins and your costs can actually be reduced absolutely Absolutely. And it's a very common question we typically get asked, um, mainly with a lot of our newer clients is, well, how much commission should I be offering? How, you know, what's the average commission for this marketplace for this particular vertical? It's, it's such a common question. So we do work with a lot of our clients to, to, to give them that guidance and say, okay, well, in order, I can tell you what the average commission is for revenue share for a casino in Europe. Yeah, you know, how, or in the US or any market, I can tell you the average, but that average is just a percentage. It doesn't, if it's not applied properly in the business, then you risk not having a profitable model. And, and the reality is a profitable model has to be win-win for both, if for the longevity, because we all know affiliate marketing is not a quick win. It's a long-term strategy. So if you're going to make it last for the long term, then you've got to make sure that you've got the right model in place or you're not giving away too much or you're not giving away too little because otherwise it won't grow. So successful affiliate marketing to me is not about onboarding as many affiliates as possible. It's Correct. about making those affiliates as profitable as possible. And that includes every single step in in the payment journey, in you know your costs for your technology, in 
the the fees and 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 you know regulatory costs that you need to be paying for and understanding all of those costs within your affiliate model is part of the strategy and the success metrics that cause a program to grow profitably. absolutely um, absolutely i need to move us on because we've kind of taken too long but um the next thing that i wanted to talk about is just where do we what do we think are the key things that are going to change in affiliate marketing and and how can networks you know um, ensure that these changes are affected correctly in terms of the technology in terms of the development cycles that you know your business goes through um, I think what I would predict uh, or forecast is I think there's going to be quite a lot of product innovation mm. I, I mean over the years there always has been so that's been part and parcel of the the nature of how the affiliate industry has changed you get to see, you know, some really very innovative products coming out in the marketplace. That's one. The other thing is obviously markets, new markets, emerging markets. There's lo lots that are growing. Um, I think the, the advantage of the whole mobile um, has made such a world, a difference in the world in terms of giving access to a lot of people that previously did not have access to an online um, or a, a mobile uh, environment. Mm. So we're going to see probably a lot of that and maybe like a return to the old school type of affiliate partnerships. By that, I mean like revenue share. I mean, when I joined, it was all about revenue share. I, I think in the last eight to 10 years, we've kind of deviated away from that model. Um, and I have a feeling we're going to go back to that model because the reality is no matter what industry you are in if or what vertical you're pushing, the revenue share model has longevity. It's a healthy partnership model and you're paying for performance. So you're not just paying for the sake of paying, but you're paying for performance. Um, and that's just a great partnership to, to be involved with. So that's my prediction. One of the things I think is going to change is that affiliate marketing is going to start to become a bigger part of the digital marketing mix. Up until this point, it's sort of hung between the 20, 30 percent mark. But I think with, you know, economic infrastructures that are changing, I think with marketers being hard pressed to actually get more value out of their budgets and not to have upfront spend to actually pay on performance. I think that affiliate marketing is now going to become a specialist skill that most businesses are going to seek and want to have expert um, advice and expertise on because if you just think about the maths if you've got a hundred pounds to spend or a thousand pounds to spend whatever it is if you can leverage that as far and wide as possible into multiple like niche pockets of areas to go and engage audiences then yeah. i think affiliate marketing makes total sense for you because you don't have to pay up front for that exposure and you're building your brand alongside so yeah. i think affiliate marketing is probably going to hit the 40 45 percent mark um, for most SMEs. And I think that's great news for people like us because, you know, they're going to need technology to track it and they're going to need expertise like I have in order to help them build, scale, launch and grow. So I'm quite excited about the future of affiliate marketing. And I think that there's massive amounts of opportunity for digital marketers that haven't specialized in this skill set to actually start to learn um, and to actually, you know, build up their skill sets and, and learn a, a, a tool of digital marketing that has previously been ignored as part Likewise. of the back end. Um, I recently read an article on the Drum magazine here in the UK about the fact that affiliate marketing has always been like the donkey. It's been, you know, quietly in the background, pushing the, the wheels forward, doing sales, often disregarded. Um, you know, affiliates haven't had a good reputation, to be fair, but also, you know, a lot of companies have disregarded the power that they actually have in terms of their agility and the way that they quickly, um, you know, react to market forces. And I think more digital marketers are, marketers are going to see that from a brand perspective and they're going to want to try and um, encompass that in their strategies. So we're getting yeah. a lot closer together and data and insight and intelligence helps us to do that. Apart yeah. from just relationship building. And so, I think also one of the things we always say, uh, you know, as, as a business or as a company is there is no bad affiliate. There is no bad affiliate market. If the model is not proper, then that's when you don't have, you know, like you mentioned, if there's any of that negativity, we typically have seen it because the, 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 there wasn't enough effort put into creating a win-win a, a model. 
Mm. And so obviously then it became all, you know, it's all negative on one side or the other, but it, it really comes down to that. I think if you get that part right, you'll see the relationship will last long because it, it's, it's a partnership at the end of the day. That's what your affiliates are. I mean, typically the, the two biggest things that I see in broken affiliate programs, because often that's the programs that I'm brought. I'm brought the ones that are broken, have been through the mill, aren't making money, somehow aren't profitable, even though they're paid on performance, which kind of makes you wonder, you know, how did that happen? Is technology is incorrect. They either have too much technology or too little. Yeah. And there's no skill. There's no strategy that sits behind the technology that's actually pushing that forward. Yeah. Ultimately, an affiliate program should never, not, should never fail. It can never fail because it's paid on performance. So yeah. if it is failing, you're either doing something wrong or you're not priced correctly or you've got too much or too little technology or you don't have the skill set internally to actually manage it effectively. Yeah. But there is no reason why an affiliate program should not be working and delivering profit over time. It's Correct. not a quick win, as you said. You know, in my experience, nine to 12 months is really when an affiliate program starts paying dividends. If you work with a specialist, possibly. In Correct. State. But anything Correct. after that, you're still paying your upfront costs before you actually get your program going. Yeah. So I'm going to move us forward onto the next slide, which is the future. Um, yeah. And one of the things that I think the future looks like is that affiliates are going to become more savvy about user engagement. They're going to want to know more about their customers. They're not just going to be one of uh, drive traffic from one place to another to get payment. There's going to be a deeper connection. They're going to want to have skin in the game with their customers in order to monetize them over and over again. So I think that might change the way that the affiliate model currently looks. Um, what What do you think about the future? Um, well, I, ha I have to say, I mean, I, I think affiliates, especially those who've been around a long time, ha have always had the customer at the forefront. I think they've known because they, in order to be able to target and deliver them to the right place, they need to know um, who that customer is, what are they looking for? Otherwise, you know, if you're just funneling traffic for the sake of funneling traffic, then you won't, you won't um, be able to know. Um, sorry, that was my very creative. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was going to say that you, you need, you, 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 you won't convert, right? If I'm going to send a, a bingo player to a sports betting brand when we know that that's not the demographic that typically goes there, then it's not going to work. So I think they've always known the good ones again. And I, I agree with you that more and more of this will become pertinent, but for the time being, it's just probably going to be um, an understanding of how do you know? Like, I don't know if you remember in the good old days, um, a lot of affiliates used to have a database of, yes. of, of users, right? Yes. And they used to market, email marketing was, was massive was huge. in the you know, early to, or mid 2004, five, six back then. And I think at that time, the, this is when they used to really understand their users. Um, then obviously with legislations, I think everybody did away with keeping data. Um, so now you still got some forums out there that have sustained over the years and, you know, player forums, um, like the casino Meisters out there. So he, you know, th there is a very, um, in-depth understanding of the user, um, to that well, level. The other thing is, I think, you know, as digital is advancing, I mean, I'm not sure that SEO is going to be as important as what it always has been. I think inbound marketing tactics and lead generation are becoming more popular for affiliates to gather data and yes. to then re-monetize and market to them afterwards. So I'm quite, I'm on a bit of a learning journey myself to understand how inbound works, yeah. you know, like as, as a specialist medium and how to leverage inbound marketing tactics in order to drive new customers to my business. And I'm sure every affiliate, if there are any affiliates on this call, is having that same kind of journey because if you can build a database, you can monetize it. Yeah. So I think it's incredibly important that you don't just look at what's happening in affiliate marketing or in the technology part or, or, or the service part of affiliate marketing, but you're looking around you as well yeah. um, because that's how you remain an expert. You understand how your concept or your specialist field impacts and fits in with everything else that's going on in the digital, digital space around you. So just rounding up now before we get onto the live chat with everybody that's joined this um, stream. 
what do you think is the one key thing that we, we want to kind of leave as a takeaway for everybody that's spent the half an hour listening to us um, talk about <laughs> our favorite subject, which is hardly a talk. Um, what, what, what do you think is your one key thing that the future holds for affiliate marketing and, and that people can take away and remember from this, this session? Sure. I, I think you touched upon it earlier on, uh, Leanne. I think the fact that affiliates are going to become a bigger part of the marketing mix. I think they have a bigger role to play. Um, I think with a lot of the advertising bans that we're going to be seeing more and more of those, we've seen it in Spain, we've seen, we've seen you know, the restrictions in other areas. Um, then you're going to see a, a, a larger dependency on affiliates and that's going to be a good thing. The other thing is, I know you said one, but just to sneak a, another one in is that, you know, a lot of the, the, the brick and mortar um, brands are going to go online more and more. So there's a lot more of the, the you know, the marketplace is, is going to go even ext extend a lot further than it is currently. That's my prediction. I think I need to second that. Um, my, um, I, I really do believe that affiliate marketing is going to become a specialist skill. And one of the things I'm incredibly passionate about is helping the next generation of digital marketers to learn the skill sets that you and I have gathered over almost two decades in this, in this industry. It's, it's our job, I think, um, as senior digital marketers to teach the next generation of marketers coming in the practical skills that we've learned on the job. Um, because as far as I'm aware, there's no university that does a degree in affiliate marketing yet. Um, yeah. I, I don't think that anybody could actually write that degree, um, but you can do on the job learning and you can learn from experts. And I think that's one of the things that I really want to see our industry invest more in is helping digital marketers to become experts in this skill set, which is going to become a bigger part of the marketing mix, especially now with the you know, economic strains that we're, that we're going to be facing. Absolutely. So on that note, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us. Um, Serafina and I hardly find it a chore talking about affiliate marketing and we could probably be chewing your ear off for an hour, but we only had 30 minutes. Uh, we are going to be live on the chat after this video. So please do come along and chat with us, ask us any questions. We'll be there for about 10, 15 minutes until the session ends. If you'd like to get in touch with either of us, our email is now up on the screen. I'm on LinkedIn practically every single day. And if you direct message me there, I will answer you back with any other questions that you have. Um, yeah. And I'd like I to like invite LinkedIn. you. I'm a big fan of LinkedIn as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's where my tribe is, I think. Um, I'd like to just invite you guys to get in touch with us. 